everybody. How you doing this Friday evening? It's wonderful in the presence of the Lord. And um, particularly this morning and this evening and this day, I have this amazing topic that I know that really, really affects a lot of us, especially if you're in the, in the African setting. And um, I know many, 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 many of us who are here are a source of a family somewhere. And um, there are two things that we need to connect to tonight. And um, one of them is to find victory out of this very, very big challenge that uh, in every... 10 of my friends, about 5 or 6 of them are affected by this thing. Where you find, um, you know, people are living in situations and conditions that are very, very difficult. That make them react to situations in ways that they react to because of what's back home. And um, after also trying to look at some of the things that personally I've, I've, I've had to deal with. And then begin to look at it from the point where we want to address this as friends. You know, like because you're on my Facebook, I can be able to share with you this. And I believe, you know, two, three people somewhere that are, able, are going through the same thing. So let's build some audience um, before I bring this across. Karibu Paul, karaoke, welcome. And... Um, it's going to be an amazing broadcast. These are the things that we don't talk about, but they're very, very important for us to do because I believe God is going to do some great things. Welcome Ken Wakabutu or Wakafutu. I realize in Kikuyu, where you read K-A-B, it means K-A. It's supposed to be Kaf instead of Kab. So we thank God for this amazing night and... Um, I'm so blessed to, to be broadcasting this to you from Nairobi and I trust that God has great things for us all. So if you are catching this live, then it's going to be a blessing. If you're going to catch this much later, it's still going to be valid and very important for you to be able to, you know, address it and deal with it and knock, with it, knock it on the head. So Ada, as usual... All right. Indeed, only God can do this thing. Now, let me go straight to the chase because I know you guys are busy. You're watching a lot of things. And also, for if you have time to be able to listen to me, I don't take that for granted because this is a very, very critical thing that we want to discuss. You know, uh, to stop means that something is on the move. To overcome means that something is towards you that you want to make sure that it does not overpower you. Now, hatred is a very strong emotion. And one thing with hatred is that it transforms from hatred to, you know, and hatred, when hatred opens a door, it comes with many things. It brings jealousy, it brings pride, it brings competition, unhealthy competition. It brings even and causes death in some cases. Especially where you find uh, maybe among the extended family, if maybe there was, there is land in question or there is something that people are trying to overcome um, that is beyond them. So um, I've had several conversations with a few of my friends and particularly uh, there's a day I posted and I wrote something like, um, I've made this observation that in in um, in the African setting, particularly, I'm addressing this to you, my friends who are in Kenya, because I believe that um, you know many of us are able to relate with what I'm saying. When somebody passes away, you know, like when pass, somebody passes on, you will have more people going to you know going to give and going to um, prepare how to send off this person. Than if that person is alive. In fact, if that person is alive and said, I have a need that requires maybe 10,000 shillings, which is like about $100, and, and say, I need you, my relatives, to come and help me get this 10,000 bill off, 
most of the times you find that the people will be will, they will say you know it's not possible uh, to assist you or you know some will just not support you and you'll be in trouble but then I looked at it a little further what could be the cause of this what could be the cause of that many many families don't come together at happier times and they always look forward to meet when difficult times come and you know what I came up with is I discovered that there's a lot of hatred that transmits among the extended families and um, particularly there are some communities that have managed to overcome this uh, particularly and they are not any you know they don't have even Christian roots but they have managed to somehow learn how to live together they have learned somehow to know how to stay together and they've learned somehow to overcome this big 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 emotion called hatred and um, to overcome this and to stop this it has to begin with an individual it has to begin with one person it can't be as a group it can't be as a it can't be as a what do you call it it can't be as a community it can't be as a people it has to start with one person one person has to make a decision and make this decision quickly and say you know what i will stop and overcome hatred that flows within my family line now there are those which are difficult to overcome which maybe they could be spiritual in nature but there are those that are outrightly things that we need to overcome by our own strength with god's help of course one of them is that you know hearsay hearsay is one of the things that causes hatred to flow among uh, the extended families like let's say for example and particularly the major problem will come with families where um, where there is a lot of unhealthy competition like let's say for example um, the older people made the made, made some mistakes and um, they got married to more than one wife so what that happens is immediately it begins to bring competition that is very very unhealthy between the two families that are trying to outdo each other and get the attention of the patriarch or the father in that time now when that time was that time now we have a time that you and i have a position and you know you like you you see your cousin on on on, on facebook and um and you just choose to ignore them because you know maybe your family and their family they don't talk or maybe you know you see you meet uh, a relative of somebody that you've had you just heard that these people are bad they <laughs> they did something so you you are a second generation that is going to receive a report of what happened maybe 20 years ago or 15 years ago and then you carry on with a generational carryover of hatred instead of trying to stop it right there and begin to build your own relationships because it's very important to take uh, to heart what Psalm 112 says. Psalm 112 says this, that their children will be mighty in the land. It says, praise the Lord. This is a scripture. Uh, Blessed is he who fears the Lord. It says, praise the Lord. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. And then he says, his descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house and their righteousness. His righteousness endures forever. Now, this is the kind of generation that you want to flow into your, gen into your extended family. Now, it could be that for one reason or the other, you do not have uh, the right connection to be able to reach out to the people that are still holding very, very dearly to this hatred. Maybe somebody was given... To, um, 20 feet more of land than the other person and because of that reason and by the way the source of the conflict is negligible when you look at the source of the conflict you can't even begin to understand how these people who are maybe tycoons or millionaires are fighting over a small piece of land that when you try to understand how did they even begin to start pulling each other's hair because of this tiny little piece of land Whereas God has richly, richly blessed them and caused them to have an education and caused them to have children that are blessed, that are, you know, they are overseas and they are doing great things. But because of that source of conflict, which was 20, 15, 30 years ago, 
the extended family begins to carry some carryovers of hatred that they begin to drag every single member of their generation into that hatred. And because of that, kids are brought up who don't understand why they don't visit their grandparents. Children are brought up when they don't understand why they are not meeting their brothers, their cousins. They don't know their cousins. They don't know where they live. And um, the source of this is simply because of an age-old conflict that was easily avoidable. You know, like you cannot divide um, you cannot divide a circle into into squares and get very big portions. You will only be able to divide it into four parts of quarters. Then that's the only way you can have a proper uh, pie chart. If I told you want to continue dividing the pie chart, continue to divide the pie chart and so on, then you can be able to get more and more and more and more smaller, smaller chunks. And now you can imagine if the source of conflict, especially um, especially in, uh, in uh, what do you call it, especially the people that are uh, connected with, uh, you know, the, the connection of the hatred itself, they will go out of their way to convince you who is maybe less of an example you've been out of the country studying and then when you're out of the country studying uh you come back and then you're excited you want to meet family members and all that and when you get in the country you meet this one person who is always carrying the syringe full of hatred and they begin to poison you with those words and telling you no you shouldn't visit this person this person is bad he's horrible you don't need to do that and it now depends on the person who is listening to those hatred words to make a decision to stop it and to overcome it or to continue transmitting it to the other person and the other person welcome pastor peterson theomo it's been a long time seeing you uh judith kirore thank you to see you watching this this is very serious um this is a very serious uh conversation that i believe even pastors need to continue reaching out to more people in their churches and in their communities to tell them about stopping this thing because you find families gather and they say don't invite so and so and they're christians the most dangerous part of this is it opens doors to generational um uh, generational um hatred one generation takes it down to the other one says uncle so and so and bad is bad Cousin so-and-so, he cannot be trusted. So-and-so cannot be trusted. It only takes you, my friend, to make a decision and say, you know what? I'm going to trust God because this is the word of the Lord that comes to me, that I should not transmit hatred. Let me tell you one thing. You can never fight a crocodile in the water. You can never fight hatred with hatred. You can never fight hatred by giving out more hatred. You cannot fight hatred by segregating yourself and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. But as you say, mm -hmm. as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, what you are simply saying is that you do not want to connect with the, your, your fellows. You don't want to connect with your family members. You'd rather stay mm -hmm. alone. And because of that, you, um, you don't allow God into your situation to change what's happening in your situation. So the family sit up, you know, this thing, you know, we try and look all nice and cozy. Everything is happening well. And, you know, we are good people. We are blessed. And this is my this and this is my that. And we tag ourselves on Facebook and all that. But the reality of it is that there are some people among us in our families that are a pain to have as relatives. And because they are a pain to have as relatives, we want to just do nothing to do, uh, to have nothing to do with them. And because we do that, we continue fighting the crocodile in water. We continue to bring hatred, to fight hatred. And let me tell you what, the Bible itself says that if a man says that he cannot love his brother, then he cannot in any way say he can love God. If you cannot love your brother, you cannot love God. Even if your brother is, is, um, is, is evil, even if your brother is the worst kind of a person, the moment you cannot be able to love them in, then you are on the verge of saying you cannot love God because you cannot love God who you cannot see. You cannot you cannot uh, be able to say I, I, I love God and yet you cannot see him. Yet your own brother, you can see them and yet you cannot be able to show them love. You cannot be able to love them in. 
So how to stop and overcome? This thing is beyond just extended family. It could even be in your nuclear family. It could be that, you know, uh, one day when you're fighting verbally with your brother or your sister, they spoke something so hurtful to you. And because they spoke those words, you have never released them. And this is clear when you look at uh, what happened to Joseph uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Old Testament. Joseph was his own brothers, by the way. His own uh, brothers took him, beat him up, and sold him into slavery. And this was a nuclear family situation. They actually took Joseph... The beloved, the beloved son, the highest level of sibling rivalry was portrayed by Joseph's son, by Jacob's sons. They picked Joseph because he had a new um, outfit that his daddy has bought him. And they said, this outfit, daddy loves you all the time. All the time, daddy, you know, does this, does this. You think that sibling rivalry is a new thing? It has been there from old. You think that uh, extended family battles are, are a new thing? They have been there from old. Check out Jacob and Esau. These were big brothers and they were brothers. And because of their rivalry, when they met, the day they met with their families, Jacob had two wives. He had Leah and he had Rachel. And Esau, who, is a, who, who later on came with his big, big family as well. And these two brothers, they had hatred among brothers. Two brothers, same mother, same father. Yet they could not see eyeball to eyeball. In fact, they were twins. They could not see eyeball to eyeball. Now, the only way to stop hatred from transmitting into your extended family is by one, choosing. You are not going to continue being the transmission channel of hatred. You are not going to be the transmission channel of bringing division in your family. If maybe um, the cousin that you despised now is blessed with the biggest job in government and he drives the biggest car, and maybe he's even able to fly in a helicopter. The extended family should be the last person to speak negatively about them. But you know what usually happens? If that person is still in that kind of a family that has bit hatred and bitterness, they begin to chew him down with their words. They begin to say, oh, you see now he's driving a big car. We are not even sure that money is from God. Maybe that person is now worshipping Illuminati. This person is this, this person is that. His own family members begin to tear him or her down. Now, if you listen to those comments and then you decide to continue in those comments yourself, do you know what you're doing? You are extending the hatred. And welcome, Jackie Shiro. I see you. Chanya, Evelyn Bogoli, welcome to the conversation. It's really deep. And I know you guys have experiences among your families or even people and among your friends. And you know what I'm talking about is for real. Yeah, I know you know it's for real. And I believe that God is about to do something through us tonight that we are going to be able to stop this problem that is a big, big deal in Africa, in our continent, in Kenya particularly. You know, I've just looked around me and I was like, whoa. I've also come across this kind of uh, extended family hatred trying to, you know, be transmitted through me. And somebody comes and tells me, you know, this person is not a good person. This cousin of yours is this and that. And I tell them, okay, I believe you. I, I've heard you, but um, I don't, okay, not in a disrespectful way. But you just cannot erase or log out your family. From your life is not possible you can open another Facebook account but you cannot log off from your genes it's not possible you cannot be able to you can change your phone number but you cannot be able to change your DNA markup if those people that you call those people are your family members no matter how they are God has a plan that you should be the source of unity you should be the source of love you should be the source of connection. You should be the source where people should come and feel refreshed. Because God is in your life. You begin to make a difference. Hallelujah. You begin to make a difference. That's right. Make a big difference. Stop and overcome extended family hatred. This is a big deal, you know, especially where we have polygamous setups, you know, where we have two different families and 
you know, for them, it's not an Instagram hashtag, my dad is cooler than yours. It's actually for real, you know? It's like these two people are constantly fighting each other. And um, now you who has heard this message, got to make a difference. You got to make a big difference. You got to make a big difference and just stop it all. You don't need to really transform anybody. The only transformation that needs to happen is with you. You have to begin to value your family members, irrespective of how they are. And you don't need to tell them anything about the others. Gossip, you channel and you cut off the gossip meal. You cut off the negative words meal. You cut off everything that has been used to describe how that hatred should continue. You know, when somebody comes and tells you, do you know that they even took that part that was near the river? Do you know that? Do you know that your uncle was the one? And then you tell them, okay. So, you know, mostly land is a big issue, especially in our, in our, in our setup here in Africa. It's not an easy thing. Well, I, I've, I've looked, I have friends who are, you know, in, in those uh, countries and um, in Europe and in America and all these places. And I see the kind of struggles, the kind of struggles that they're having, you know. Like um, just this week, we saw what happened in the London fire. And you can see the community, the community al around the around that block because that block i understand it's uh, uh they're not really like the affluent in the society because it's a big block full of a lot of housing and then around there we have the affluent people they all came and you know uh, to be honest i never thought you guys in in the uk eat bananas you know like but i saw bananas guys giving bananas and guys giving things and they came out as communities to try and, uh, and support, bring out flowers for the people who have died, and they just want to connect as community. The same thing that happens when we have tragedies here in our country. When we have tragedies, we are very quick to come together. We are very quick to talk to each other and you say many things. Now, during the election time, we are divided sometimes using these political parties and using ideologies and using what the politician tells us. But most importantly, any type of hatred, be it, um, be it in any form, should be stopped in any way. You know, sometimes um, relationships bring this hatred. Like, for example, your cousin goes and marries from the other tribe and you guys are not cool with that other tribe. Especially, here yeah, I'm talking about my setup in Kenya, you know, like... I've had lots of conversations with, with newlyweds and people who are planning to get married and the challenges they face based on where they come from or based on how they look or based on many things. And I know in the European countries and in America and all those places, racism is your problem. Here we have tribalism as our problem. We are all the same color, but we're fighting each other and scratching each other. But you guys, you look at the colors, you'll say, oh, you, you're black and me, I'm white. I've never seen a white person. By the way, no white people exist. Show me a white person. I'll show you the color of white. White is like this. This is white. This one here. White. This is white. No white people exist. So the people that are different colors from this one, because I'm not black. Black is... <laughs> this is black. And if you look at me, I'm not this. So this is black and this is me, different. So we here, our challenges are more about... How do you, what's your accent, what color, what need? If you come to the family, the family is not now, this is very, very interesting. Because before even you go to your uncle, that, you know, that begins to, mm -hmm. let's say, let's just describe this thing. We have the nuclear family, and the nuclear family is the father, the mother, and the children. The extended family is when you introduce the sister to the husband. When you introduce the brother to the wife, that becomes an extended family instantly. Instant. There is no other question about it. Now, when you have an uncle of the wife into that setup again, it's the wife's extended family. Sometimes the carryovers these people are bringing into, into your lives, they are not glorifying God in any way. So the number one thing we need to look at and really reflect upon is read Psalm 112, number one. Is that, first of all, it contains praise to the Lord. 
Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. The fear of the Lord will help you to stop and overcome family or extended family hatred. Because God himself says that no one will hate his brother and yet claim he loves God. Welcome Alice Muve. I'm glad you, you caught this live and you're watching. And I also pray that this will be able to be a blessing to you and to another person. That, you know, you will have to just stop that flow of the evil river. You stop it and dry it completely. It needs a complete change of mind. It means that for the wives who have challenges with their mothers-in-law, that is an extended family that begins to be, needs to be stopped. That hatred needs to be stopped because they, sometimes it can get very bad, you know. Like when I've seen one TV advert when, um, you know, the mother is coming to visit the son and she's going around touching things with the finger and checking the dust and then asking the, husband, the, 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 the son, hey, you don't eat these days, you know, those kind of questions. The extended family hatred, it's so, so incredibly strong in some areas that people are not able even to eat together. Even if you brought um, fried chicken um, uh, takeaway meal and you said here is a pack of the best chicken and the best fries and the best all those things, that person will look at those things and then they will say, hmm, why did you bring me these ones from this uh, fried chicken place? You should have brought me these ones from this other place. It's very, very hard to please somebody who doesn't want to be pleased. Let me tell you, stop trying. Just stop the hatred. It's just simple. You don't need to try to make them look and feel good. You'll go and buy many things, but if you have not dealt with the hatred in your heart, whatever you do, they will do the opposite way, and then you will be so hurt, and then you will feel so bad that you allow those things to come to you. So my friend, I urge you by the mercies of God, you have to stop the family hatred. You got to stop it completely. It's so difficult to have hatred flowing in your family line. And then you are saying that you love God. It's not possible. My friend, you cannot have those two things in the same place. We knew of, we all remember litmus paper. And there was the red litmus paper. Let me just take you back to the history, to the chemistry class. There was the red uh, litmus paper and there was the blue litmus paper. If you put one of them in acid and you check, the color is going to change. When you take the other one in, uh, in, in a base and you look at it, the color is going to change. So if your thoughts are acidic in nature, then your litmus test has to be changing that type of color that changes according to that uh, kind of thoughts you have. Acid will totally destroy base will also destroy this thing does not require any manner of hatred it requires us to be right in the place called love and love is the neutral between acidic and basic and that's the thing that we need god to come and help us because if you find your brother's car broken down in the middle of the wilderness and he's the brother that was speaking negative words about you and you drive away you have continued with the wheel of hatred. But if you just stop in the middle of the road, irrespective of what they have said to you, and you help them get their tire changed, and you get them get on their way, and you don't expect anything with that, then God is going to bless you. And you got, let me tell you, you know, I've had these conversations many times, and I hear them, you know, even I've had it with my own uh, relatives where you know they say we try to do this but then they did not see we try to do this then they did not see we did this they did not see let me tell you they're not supposed to see because as long as you carry hatred in your heart god will not allow blessing to flow as long as you carry any of those those negative emotions in your life there will be no blessing from god yes you'll be prosperous money will be there in abundance Yes, you will grow and prosper anyway. But let me tell you, as long as there is a seed of hatred that is growing, that seed of hatred will be transmitted to your children. 
and they will go encourage and transmit it to their children if we don't cause our children to value our old people at these early stages of life then you remember what my friend you're gonna get old and they will not value you they'll not remember you when you cannot log in into your own life and allow your children not to have hatred then my friend ha ninoma it's difficult i'm very passionate about this because i've i've witnessed how people like god blesses one person so much this one person can take care of all the children in the family and pay all their school fees but the minute he starts to make that one step then everybody starts to start fighting this person they start fighting this person. They become enemies of progress. You don't understand what they want. You, you want to help, but then they start fighting you and they start asking you things. Like, why Why are you giving them? Why are you paying for them school fees? Why are you doing this? And you know what? Within no time, if you don't understand what's happening to you, you're going to run. And when you run, you're better off going to sponsor other children in a children's home than sponsoring your own family. And let me tell you something. If you forsake your own flesh and blood, <laughs> the blessing is not going to flow. That is very, that's scripture, my friend. It is, scripture is the word of God. That you cannot neglect your own flesh and blood. You cannot neglect them and then expect God to bless you. Because they don't need to tell you Asante Sana. They don't need to tell you bon, uh, Maxi. They don't need to tell you Nemovea. They don't need to tell you Newega. They don't need to tell you Oriti, whatever. They just need to play the part that God plays them to be. And that's your family. Whether you're, they're good or evil people, that's your family. If at all they're drunks, they're people that are although they're embarrassing. Sometimes, you know, they're in the street and all this. And you, you're, well, you're well suited, you're well clean up and everything. And then you see them and you want to run. No, no, don't run. Approach them. <laughs> That sounds tough. It sounds very tough, doesn't it? Think about these things. Let me get to that verse. Welcome all. I see you, my bro, uh, Rogers Ongera, watching. God bless you, sir. It's such a blessing to see you. Natunakuja uko kwa guardian. Tablets and uh, get a pastel for you. So that's a good thing. So guys, um, I hope that if you're taking notes, you're going to make action. And I made this to come expressly on Friday because this weekend you need to make an, you need to take action. If you're in a place where you can travel out of the city and go and visit your old people and go and visit your family members, go and visit that um that situation, maybe it is your uncle, maybe it's your cousin, maybe it's your grandfather, maybe whoever it is that you need to make peace with and be a blessing to. It is time for you to stop that very, very difficult thing that people are doing. We cannot continue doing this. We cannot continue destroying the very fabric of what we believe. We cannot watch as families are tearing each other's uh, eyes, you know, because you can have, you have a word, you know, it's really paining when you you see what people are doing in the news, when you see um, a father uh, burns his children. Do you want to tell me that father before he got so stressed that he wanted to kill his whole family and kill himself, that he has no family members? You want to tell me that there is no extended member of the family that could have made a difference in his life? You want to tell me that there is no one would have stopped that from happening? You want to tell me that? The problem is when we have these extended family problems and then we allow them to eat the very fabric of what we believe, we have to stop this. We have to stop this and it begins with you and it begins with you and it begins with you. I'm pointing at myself in this video. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say it begins with me. It begins with you, everybody. It begins with all of you. It begins with all of us. Hallelujah. You know, I it's, it's very emotional what I'm talking to you about. Because, um, you know, I've seen things happen around people. And, and it's difficult when you see them. That man who's walking on the street, he got relatives. You know, that young man who's carrying um, 
uh, who is an urchin, who what you call chokora, you know, that person has a there's somebody somewhere who knows them. There's somebody who can trace their family line. There is I'm telling you, people do not just drop from trees. People do not just come out from the ground. People are not seeds that grow. People are connected as souls and they flow as families. Let me tell you, the nations of the earth are governed by humans. And God has allowed us as human beings to rotate, to be in the circle of the earth, to, to be able to go to the space, to be able to go to the sea, to be able to uh, swim in scuba water, to do all these things because we are human. But let me tell you, the next time you see someone posting something very, very distressing on their Facebook, or they are posting dirty stuff, or they are posting uh, things like they don't care about life, you know, or they are making very, very inflammatory comments that could lead to fights and more hatred. It does not mean they don't have family members. Let me tell you, they got them. And if you look at the people that are busy destroying the very fabric of our society, are the people that are stemming out of rejection, that are stemming out of very, very, very bitter family feuds. If you go to the Dandora dumping site or where you have a lot of uh, street people, you will discover that some of them have very, very well-to-do families. Some of them are from very affluent families. But if at all those families were to gather, they would not mention that they have that one child or that one family member that is on the other side of the world. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandment. His descendants will be mighty in the land, and he, with the generation of the upright, will be called blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. That's the word I want you to linger in your head. You need to stop talking about your relatives as if they are the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is hatred. You don't need to hate them. You need to be a crusader of unity. Let people come together. Let people come together. Let families come together. Let there be reconciliation. Why is it that we have some serious problems happening like two cousins getting married? You know, first cousins, you know, I don't know about many other, you know, kind of cultural practices. But here in my community in Africa and Kenya, it's very, very difficult when... For example, the daughter of your sister marries this, your son. They meet somewhere because you are so much hating each other's families that you'd never have time to meet. And because of that, your children, they meet out there and they have children. Hey, my friend, more difficult situations get born out of this hatred. Hatred is the opposite of love, and it is a very strong emotion. It's a very, very strong emotion, let me tell you. The same way love is a strong emotion, hatred is a very, is a stronger emotion. And if you, if you find yourself saying these statements as I finish, because I gotta finish, uh, I gotta finish. If you find yourself saying these statements, I've tried everything I can, but yet they do not see. There is a problem, you got hatred in your heart. Got bitterness. You gotta stop the bitterness. You gotta stop the hatred. If you find yourself saying words like, I've tried everything. I've done everything in my power. I've gone, I've done, I've done. And then you're justifying yourself why you do not need to meet your mother again. You're justifying yourself why you don't need to meet your father again. You're justifying yourself why you don't need to meet your sister, your half-sister, maybe your parents may, uh, may have uh, made their own uh, wrong choices and you end up with a half-sister or a stepsister, and then you, you, you find having, um, 
you find yourself, you know, having to justify yourself why you cannot love them. My friend, tonight, as I stop this broadcast, I want you to stop the hate and to overcome extended family hatred. It's okay. Add that cousin into your Facebook. Add that relative, that auntie, the one that you call a spy. Whatever. Add them. Let them see how God has blessed you. Let them see that you don't have anything against them in your life. Let them know you love them. Don't do it for them. Stop the hatred from flowing in your life. Because it will stop blessings from coming to you. And your generation will not be blessed. Don't sabotage the next family reunion. Go. We are busy. I know. But you can make time for important things. If you can make time and go for a burial, you can make time and attend a wedding. If you can make time to attend a hospital fundraiser, you can find time to help your cousin who is not of good means or your brother be able to achieve an important milestone like getting married. It's an expensive affair here in Kenya and also I believe in other places. You can give the moral support. You can give your time. You can give your vehicle and drive it, by the way. Drive your car. <laughs> Don't try and bring more problems by giving out things that are close to your heart and then they are broken and then now it begins to fuel more. You know. I hope you've been blessed and you're going to take action. Let me know how this message has impacted you if you're going to watch it. And um, I really appreciate you for listening. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for my friends and those who shall come to hear this video and watch this video. I pray that, God, you will come and help our families gather together around the nations, Lord, that we can begin to uh, see you move in families, see you move in situations and conditions, and that your favor will be upon each one of us. Lord, I thank you because you are bringing families together and you are causing reunions to come back together and people are going to be blessed in your presence so i thank you lord that this is going to happen in our generation and in our time and indeed our generation will be blessed wealth and riches shall be in our house and righteousness shall be forever enduring so we thank you father and we bless you share this video let people know that it has to start with them and they gotta end the hatred it's not about them it's about you you and you nobody else it's about you so allow the Lord to help you. God bless you. Thank you, Alice Mouvea. I'm really encouraged by that. Shalom, peace.